Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to prune this Skyrocket Juniper. It's got a nice blue hue. This is a good substitute for emerald green arborvitae, which people tend to love. This grows about the same height, but this is deer and bunny resistant. And a lot of people have deer pressure. So if you're looking for something, this is a good option. The problem I have is I want it to remain tight. I could have got a tailored juniper and maybe next year I'll get some tailored junipers. Um, but, I, but I don't like how this is growing. So I'm going to share this tree to see if I can get it to take on a little bit tighter growth habit. And we're going to see how that works. If not, I'll take them out and I'll put tailored junipers in. I have two of them and this is the one on the other side. Again, it's a little bit wider than I want it to be. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to prune it pretty, pretty hard. But let's talk about junipers and what you can and cannot do. When it comes to junipers or evergreens, you're going to have the new growth, which is all this green stuff. And you have the stuff that's starting to harden off a little bit down here. If you get too deep into the shrub and I cut it there, that will not recover. So I don't want to cut it too much into that brown wood. I'm just going to come out with my uh, manual shears and we're going to trim it back. And I'm going to put the camera on so you can watch me do it. The reason, got a little wind in the mic, the reason I chose the Skyrocket Juniper over a tailor is because it doesn't get as tall. It's only about 15 feet tall, and I think the tailored Juniper gets almost 25 to 30 feet tall, something like that. So I wanted something that would be a little shorter because this, again, is flanking my duck, so I don't want it to overpower it. It would look funny. So stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Today, I'm just going to use a standard shear. This is rubbing alcohol, and you want to sterilize your pruners or your shears. I'm just going to spray a little rubbing alcohol on it to hopefully kill any insect or uh, fungus, any kind of infection that could be on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and try to create a two-foot wide column. And in some cases, I may be a little bit tighter than I should be. What I am not going to do is I'm not going to trim the top of this. If I trim the top of this, it's going to make it want to bush out even more, and I don't want it to do that just yet. Um, and I really don't want to retard the growth. Hopefully it gets up to 12 feet, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do with that central leader. Wispy thing on top. This thing grew, hmm, I believe this tree grew well over a foot in a year, and I didn't expect that, especially because it was the first year in the ground. But we're going to come in here and I'm going to prune it pretty tight. I'm just going to start chopping it off. I'm going to do it mechanically. I have a power shear that I just got. But I don't want to use that out here. They don't recommend using power shears on the juniper and if the, these are a little bit too tough, which it looks like it may be for me, I may go grab a hand pruner and come back. But I really want, I really want this to be a narrow specimen for me. Yeah, I think these branches are a little bit tough for my my pruner or my shear. So I'm gonna go grab a hand, I'm gonna go grab a hand pruner, I'll be back. Try number two, got a hand pruner, again, sterilize. We're gonna go in and I have a rose bush that's behind here, a beautiful rose bush, and I'm gonna have to uh, work amongst it. See what I can get going here. Yeah, this is probably, Something I should have did to begin with is just use the smaller one. I'm taking a little bit of a risk doing this because we are actually in October, but I'm okay with that. Sometimes experimenting is all what gardening is about, right? You also can take some of these cuttings and try rooting them and making more trees. I'll save some of them and maybe I'll do that as well. Want to top these again? I want it to be kind of narrow form. So I'm going to cut in here. I 
would have been nice if the the lopper would have or the shear would have worked but it didn't so again we will just do the best we can here try to leave a pile on the ground for myself some of them i want to cut and get out because i just don't want them encroaching on my rose bush so i will cut them back and that's okay There's quite a few cuttings already. I could really make a little tree farm just based upon these. Try to nip these younger growth ones a little bit more. Again, I want to maintain as tight of a growth as I can. Sometimes by making the cuts, I will have even more growth come on the inside. And then next year I can shear it a little tighter because it's going to put out all kinds of new growth along this. And maybe once I get the new growth in the spring, maybe midsummer, I can come in with a power shear and be able to nip these wispy or the, the new growth instead. It might be a lot better. But yeah, I got it. Cut all this stuff out of here. The trick is getting around this rose bush without let, having it attack me. thing about evergreens is a lot of times they will actually put their new growth buds out in the winter time. So by pruning them now, it's going to put out new shoots and that new growth may die back. And I'm okay with that. Um, I've had the experience that um, even if the new growth burns a little bit, it just comes so full, it fills out, it won't matter. Oh, the bush is attacking me. And so towards the inside, I'm cutting it a little bit deeper in because it's the back of the bush. So you're not really going to see it quite so much. Just really want to prune it. And remember, when you're pruning, it's actually going to encourage growth. But I want it to be controlled growth, you know, to put out a bunch of new growth that I can shear. Yeah, I've got, so the inside's a little bit thinner than what I've got. It's outside's a little shaggy. So I'm going to cut it a little bit deeper in. I don't really want to have could have almost created a topiary out of it but I'm going to leave it for right now because I can always come back and prune more in the spring like next June well early summer I can always prune more I don't want to take too much off but I've thinned it out a little bit so I think it will be good so We'll have to check back next year and see how this went but this is my first time doing this one and uh, i'm excited to see what the progress is if this video is helpful give us a thumbs up so youtube knows to share this content with other also consider subscribing so you don't miss any of our other great content if you like how-to videos check this playlist next thanks for stopping by have a great day